Here we go. What's up, guys? Uh, Andrew Cruzy here and the Mr. Brad Newman with the amazing long hair and beard in full force. Looking good. They call me business, Jesus. Ooh, yeah. And we are talking about today transitioning from one-on-one -on -one coaching to group coaching to launching high-ticket mastermind packages. Um, and we've had the whole journey here. Uh, Brad joined our team full-time back in September. Uh, he was a part-time coach for a year and a half. I don't know how I did it with, uh, without him full-time um, because I went on the whole journey. I, I went on from one-on-one -on -one coaching for $500 for a six-week one-on-one package um, to uh, moving to group coaching and that stress of like, what do I do with my one-on-one -on -one clients? Uh, to ultimately building up that core group offer. Um, and then, oh shit, how do I sell something for more than $30,000? We're going to be talking about that journey here. And Brad has been through it every step of the way. Um, and he's seen the ups, the downs, the goods, the bads, uh, the uglies. Uh, <laughs> we're going to talk. And the beautiful. And the, and the beautiful things. And the beautiful. We're going to talk all about that. If you guys have any questions at any time, drop them down below. We'll be answering those questions. Uh, and uh, yeah, we want to hop into this stuff. Brad, what was it like seeing it from the from the outside uh, when I was literally living in your house uh, and building all this stuff? Yeah, that's a great question. And if anyone is being reintroduced to Andrew and me and our love story from the beginning, I met Andrew on a sales call to enroll him in one of those 30K masterminds. Uh, and then- 90K mastermind. And that was a 90K mastermind, hashtag 3X. Uh, and as part of my duty and responsibility of closing the deal was also to manage the account. And so Andrew ended up flying out to San Diego. He stayed with me on my couch. He said for three days, they ended up sleeping on my couch for almost a year because he met my beautiful roommate, Kate, uh, and they ended up dating. And so I had a bona fide entrepreneur living on my couch. So I got to see everything, dude. I saw everything the ups, the downs, the magic, the not so magic through your transition. Um, I guess overall, dude, like the number, what was the question? I just, I get so excited talking about our story. Dude, I remember you had your 4K month. I remember when you had your 4K month. In December like, of 2018, when I was burnt out. Yeah. Yep. I remember you were doing like agency stuff and then you transitioned to like really dialing in the Facebook group, really committing to your audience, just showing up every single day, working your pipeline, giving value, uh, send, like sending out master classes. And I remember like you got on sales calls and you burnt out. And so I've seen, and then I've seen you do huge events. Everything from like the million dollar weekends to the 4K months, dude. And the one thing that was consistent that whole time was my Facebook group, was that tribe of buyers, was that foundation that allowed me to persevere, even though I had that 4K month because I just stopped working because I was burnt out. I was able to go back to the Facebook group, nurture it up and make those sales. And I feel like if I was doing a uh, just ads to webinar uh, and running that whole system, I, I wouldn't be would have wouldn't have been able to ramp up uh, as quick as as I did after I burnt out. Like the tribe is everything. Like building everything. Up, yeah. Because like the, the topic of this like discussion is like how do we leverage from one on one to group then to mastermind? And it's like structure don't fucking matter if you don't have a tribe. If people aren't listening to you, you're not providing value, if you're not committing to them and like solving problems and showing up as the expert every single day, like it's a, it's a theory, it's a business model theory that provides nothing of value if you don't first like commit to a tribe. And that's like, dude, that's the superpower that you were did, that you did. That's why your first client, Jeff Miller, who you're in fucking with right now, like his Facebook group, Ask Fan is like 30K. 
people more your facebook group here is 20k I have, like i have this huge longing for community i don't know if anybody else out there can relate like i just need community like especially right now with everything that's gone on in the world and all the lockdowns and shutdowns like i crave community and when we can provide that to people and let me know do you guys have facebook groups out there drop the name of your facebook group down below are you creating those communities uh because i feel like that's what really grows the world bringing like-minded people together and that's the foundation for everything in your business is you cultivating those communities um and always being able to go back to those communities and have people enroll into your offers from those communities. Um, and I wouldn't have been able to go from one-on-one -on -one to group coaching to a high ticket mastermind if it wasn't for my foundation, my group, that's where it all started, right? Solid, right? The, the training is like, how do you do from one-on-one -on -one to group to then mastermind, like your backend offers. We're talking about LTV, we're talking about leverage of your offer structure. And like what, what I'm hearing is, it actually has nothing to do with the offers first and has everything to do with the, the audience that you have. Yeah. And, and what? It, it goes in those stages though. I, I like I, I, some people move to uh, their high ticket mastermind way too quick uh, instead of really uh, nailing in their core offer and then their core offer falls apart and then they're like going, Oh shit in their high ticket MRR uh, mastermind offer. And, and, and we're gonna hop into that. We're gonna talk about the right way to do it here uh, in, in a few moments. But I think, I think overall you, you have this free community being your Facebook group or, or Instagram or, uh, or YouTube, I prefer Facebook groups, but cultivating this community. And then you have these uh, premium communities uh, being your group offer, being your mastermind. And um, there was something that I brought up, the, who you're focused on serving, the levels of service, like the very first level. Uh, and, and when I look back, connecting the dots, looking back, it was my focus of where I was putting it that allowed me to really embody who I needed to be in that moment. And it started with my audience, building up my audience and my tribe. And then it transitioned to putting more focus on my clients, my premium community. And then it was focusing on my team for leverage so they could serve the community, so they could serve the clients. And there was that level of focus that uh, allowed me to scale up my business. I had to be on the audience first. I needed to get traction with the audience. And then it was with clients. I needed to switch my focus because I didn't have a team. I needed to focus more on clients and really get them results and get traction there. And then I needed to get traction with my team so they could better serve clients and community. So it's perfect. So January 2018, 4K month, you have a rip in Facebook. Take me back to like your transition of like, why did you through, like, did you do done for you and then trans transition to one-on-one, -on -one, then transition to group? Like, where did you first start? And then what would, what would take you through a little bit of the transition? For, for agency. And I caught the coaching bug uh, when I did my first one-on-one -on -one and got paid for my first one-on-one. -on -one. I was like, oh my God, I get so much energy from coaching. This is phenomenal. And uh, it was more leverage. I didn't have to uh, uh, go back and create a Facebook ads campaign and all these funnels and do all this delivery. It was literally my knowledge helping somebody get an agency client. So it started with done for you. And then I caught the, the coaching bug. And then I was doing one-on-ones and realized, oh shit, I am doing way too many. And I, I don't have time leverage. I can't make the impact that I want um, because all of my time is taken up by these one-on-ones. And um, then it was just the transition to uh, group coaching that was uh, really made me realize the power of a group coaching container and how much more powerful it is than a one-on-one -on -one container. And 
how you can actually reach the masses with your message if you're doing uh, a group program. So that happened, uh, I launched my group program in February of 2018. And that's when I had my best month, a $62,000 month back then. Um, and it was just off to the races from there. But what do you think keeps people stuck in the one-on-ones? What are the, like, the key things that keep people stuck? So I just had a conversation with one client, Amber, yesterday, and she didn't want to let go of her one-on-one clients. She didn't see the path to uh, a group container and putting those one-on-one clients in a group container. And we'll go to the first point, transitioning from one-to-one to a group container. Um, a lot of the transition will involve a lot of one-on-one elements starting out. Uh, it's really hard to just give up one-on-one uh, like right away and your clients still get results. But in that time, doing one-on-one in a group container while you're still doing group calls, you're building out content, then you start to, um, uh, you really start to uh, leverage yourself out of the one-on-ones. When you have that content, when you get better with your methodologies, when you hire an accountability coach to get better results. But the transition doesn't need to be as hard as you make it. Um, it can be simply putting your one-on-one clients into a group container, still delivering the one-on-ones, but you have a group aspect to it uh, with building out content along the way. Um, And I feel like it's just a mental barrier for people where they're like, how do I make that transition? What are your thoughts on it though? Yeah, I think it's the, the, where people get stuck is that, you know, the group container uh, from the one-on-one will demand a different uh, rise in their leadership level of like being out front and leading a group of people and being able to be consistent with what you teach and how you teach and how you get results in mass. It's a different skill set than it is the one-on-one, uh, but it's people see it as something different than it's just a different skill set. Like if you can learn how to deliver results one-to-one, if you can learn how to deliver results done for you, then it's just a different fucking skill set of delivering results in a group format. And all you kind of need to do is be open and willing to to literally kill the thing that got you at the next level in order to get to the next level, which is like the growth of entrepreneurship of like what got you to your top limit is literally the exact opposite thing that's going to get you to your next limit. So that's what I think about that. What do you think about that? Yeah, um, I I think one thing that I wanna bring up is the difference between a coach and a consultant. And Brad is the best coach I've ever seen. That's why he's head of coaching for Authority Accelerator and Seven Figure CEO, our two programs. Because with coaching, you help your clients create the transformation within themselves. And with consulting, you are providing the answer. You are providing the solution. And I feel like coaching allows it to stick way better with somebody. And it's through strategic questions, not strategic answers when you're coaching. So the beauty, when I see Brad coach, it's like an orchestra. It's so fucking beautiful Um, because you really don't provide the answer. Exactly. But you allow the client to source the answer within themselves through strategic questions. So I think that's a super important bring, uh, part to bring up here. Like, how do you do it? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. How do I do it? I have a standard for people that um, they are it's not a lack of resources. It's a lack of resourcefulness to investigate the fucking answer for yourself, right? If like an entrepreneur is not taught how to investigate and find the answers for yourself using the resources, the communities, the information, fucking Google or YouTube to generate the answer, everything is out there. The course content is all out there. Someone, the community, the people who have literally gone through the exact same problem, but people can't access the ability to ask the question in the Facebook group, like who else has gone through this challenge? And so 
it's me. I'm enabling people if I just give them the answer. Like I'm just giving them the fish and they're going to be hungry tomorrow. And then they have to come back to me to save them for the lack of answers or the lack of resources that they have. So I have a lot of challenging conversations with clients all day long because like what they buy is like the answer. And I'm like, the answer is actually more questions. And I know that's tripping your ass out right now. But once they get it, they're unlocked. Yeah. And the forever. answer is their own internal thinking, right? And, and one thing that uh, I constantly bring up is if you're working harder than your clients on the coaching call, it's not a coaching call. It's a consulting call, right? You're giving them the answers. You want your clients to work. You want your clients to think. You want your clients to ingrain it into themselves so they can actually go out and do it. And that's the magic of what, what you bring to the table. Um, and what are some of your favorite coaching questions to ask? So, so if you guys want some awesome coaching questions, and I want to see some engagement down below, uh, so we've got Dano here. Good to see you. Uh, Bruno, I will answer that. Kevin, I will answer that. Good to see you guys. Um, but hashtag questions down below. If you want to hear some of the most powerful coaching questions from Brad Newman here, and we will hop into that. We're not going to start it, uh, get started until I see questions down below. Hopefully I can see all this. Justin says, dig it. Jessica. Dig it stuff. Alex says coaching consulting is like teaching to fish and selling fishing a hundred percent. Dave, first one with questions. Morgan, we got a little bit of a lag here. Justin, questions. Going cool. Jessica, questions. Love it. Give me a few more. Heather, questions. Love it. Okay, we got, we got, oh, we got seven Brunos here. Love it. Love seeing your face, Bruno. What are some of your favorite coaching questions, Brad? So oh, they're not going to seem like they're revolutionary because they're the most basic, simple shit there is, but it's the commitment to ask the questions. It's like sales call questions or sales scripting questions. Everyone's been through sales scripts. We have an awesome million dollar sales script inside of AA and seven figure CEO that I use as a high ticket sales pro. And they're good questions, but it's knowing the right questions to ask at the right time. Right. So like when clients come up, I, I literally have them six inch putt, like, because I'm trying to under, I'm trying to get them to think through their actual own answers. So when they first come up, I ask them to literally size it up for me. Like what's your biggest issue currently? What's your goal? And then if you were me, how would you think about it? So I have them bring and prepare and I train them how to actually even ask their question first about the problem in their business. And then once they give me that information, how would you think about it, Brad? I literally turn it right back on them and force it onto them. I take their monkey. My dad always used to tell me this, like people are just trying to throw monkeys on your back. I take their monkey and I put it back onto them. And they're like, how would you think about it, Brad? And so I say, great question. I have a couple thoughts, but first, how are you currently thinking about solving your own issue right now? When you said that, what does that mean for you specifically? I don't know. If you did know, if you had to look, if you needed to come up with three to five ways to solve that problem right now, what would you do? What are your next steps exactly? When, why, what happens if you don't do it? And so I'm just coaching people through their own thinking about the situation. And as soon as they get to the spot of resourcefulness, which sounds like I could do this, 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 and this, and this, I'm like, great, we have a training on that. It's in this module over here and that will answer your question. But I need them in a state of resourcefulness to be able to do that. So I tee up the question. I ask them how would they maybe think about it. And then I just kind of guide them along to force the answers out of them. I love it. And there's one more step that Brad brings to the table that I've seen over the past four months. You've just nailed in, which is getting it on when they come up with a solution, getting it on the client's calendar. When are you going to do that? Right? Cool. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. What time? 12 o'clock. Okay, cool. Putting on your calendar right now. And, <laughs> and it, Brad's a tough coach, but it generates the result. 
Because um, when it becomes tangible, when you have a due date, a time, it's on your calendar, you know you're doing it. And I know I fucked that up in the past, just leaving it up in the air, where it was like, cool, you came up with a solution, go do it. But it wasn't tangible. It wasn't, it didn't have a definitive due date, right? Execution is the name of the game. And so like, if anyone's thinking, thank you for that. It's a great reflection. And thank you for reminding me of like what I'm doing. Like if anyone's like, oh, I can't do that. Like, I can't say that. I can't ask that. I can't like, it feels like, like push my clients to do that. Like I would, I would suggest to you that perhaps like that is literally the belief that is stopping you from transitioning from one to one to group because you need to become comfortable and becoming uncomfortable and having direct conversations with people. The more direct you are, I promise, the more money they're going to pay you, and they're more going to they're going to listen. The better results they're going to get. Yeah, yeah. And transitioning to group when I'm doing trainings in a group format and getting my clients to work. The questions are like, what did you love most about this? Uh, what stuck out to you? What did you learn? Uh, what was most valuable for you here? Uh, and, and really getting them to see the value and really extracting it from their brain after you do somewhat of a training, or if you're going back and forth with another client and they came up with a solution and you got it on their calendar, as a group, you should be asking, hey, what'd you find most valuable out of that conversation? What did you love most about that conversation? And get your clients to be active and engaged. Because if you are doing your group coaching calls and nobody's engaging, it's because you're not asking those questions, right? We literally had a client, Morgan, Morgan Danielle. What's up, Morgan? She might be here. She came in hair on fire because she filled up her one-on-ones. She hopped on a couple calls with us instead of seven figure CEO. Andrew and I sorted her out. I coached her a little bit of how to conduct the group. She hired a VA. She showed up to my coaching call being like, I'm going to have a record month and I'm bored because the group is running itself. The VA is doing all the administration. My content's all planned out. My sales calls are booked. What do I do? And I said, that's where we need you because now we get to make bigger goals. We get to hit your goals faster. So your monthly goal just became your weekly goal. Welcome to like condensing time. And it's just that little swift, but she was willing to take that on and be available for that and like up her game and learn the strategies to put the transition into place. It took two weeks. We sorted her ass out. Love you, Morgan. No, she's good. Morgan's here. She says, hey, Morgan, you are a fucking savage. You're changing so many goddamn lives. Keep doing what you're doing. The, the zero to 30K range is the hardest. It's the traction range, right? Zero to 30K traction, uh, 30 to 80K leverage, uh, 80K plus scale, right? And going from zero to one is the hardest part. Going to one to 10 is easy. Going from zero to one, oh, it's, it's hard. It's unbearable. It's am I, uh, it's, uh, am I doing the right things? It's imposter syndrome. It's, uh, so you're, you're involved in every part of your business, except it's the hardest part, right? Going from zero to one, hardest part, going from one to 10, it's easy, right? Um, but yeah. And one more thing that you brought up, Brad, was when people say, I don't know. And I like well, from landmark or something saying, I don't know means I don't want to look. And um. I love that fucking quote. Because when I, I still say, I don't know, from time to time, I'm human. And then when I say, I don't know, that quote pops in my head. I'm like, oh, I need to investigate this. I need to see this shit. That's another thing you should share with your clients. I don't know means I don't want to look, right? I literally stop at coaching calls. I'll be like, excuse me? Like off limits. Like you are not allowed to say, I don't know, because we will not, like, that's not true. That's not fucking true. That's lazy thinking. And mm -hmm. like, that's the pattern of save me. I don't know. Tell me the answer. Like, no, come on. That is such a good reminder. <laughs> We're teaching people how to think about their business, Andrew. I think that's what you're fucking brilliant at. It's what you've taught me over the last two and a half years is like being able to think 
through the issues, think through the developments, think through the strategy with the right information, the stable data, and like making information, like making the best guesstimate decisions based off of measurable data and gut feelings, measurable data and gut feelings. And like having the best information we have and making the best decision we can. And this is why we've been able to get results for ourselves and for others, like in waves, dude. It's like, we're teaching people how to think. We're teaching people, we're giving people like the fucking roadmap, the step-by-step -step process to make the leverage. And we're insulating them in a community that demands accountability and execution. Like there is no hiding. Yeah. And so, there, which is good. People don't want to hide anymore. And I think you're like so right on the zero to one being the hardest and the one to 10 being like simple. Like if the solopreneurship, oh, I don't wish that upon anybody. Yeah. Nobody. It's the hardest. That shit is so fucking hard. So fucking hair, uh, scary. The product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go. I want, I want everybody to write this down right now. Uh, it will help you take it in bite-sized chunks of where you're at in your business and what you need to focus on. So write this down right now. Uh, and if you wanna hear it, what are the bite-sized chunks? Where do I need to be focusing my time at different levels of my business? Put one in the chat. I wanna see if we're still engaged here. Uh, I wanna see if you guys are playing full out. I love your faces. I see uh, Deva down here. Uh, I am terrible with names. Gen Genevieve, I think I nailed that one. She says your hair is adorable uh, or I adore it. I do too, it's beautiful. You definitely use head and shoulders. Jeff is in the other room, so he's a little ahead of the pack and he put one uh, in the chat. Heather, uh, Dano, Paul, uh, Eli. Ah, Eli, uh, we should go out to dinner tonight, buddy. Good to see you. Uh, Justin, Deva again, I love it. Chris, uh, Kristen, good to see you guys. Um, so what are the bite-sized chunks? Um, so, there are three stages to scaling a seven figure business and you need to be focused on different things at different stages. So how we break them down, zero to 30 is traction stage. Zero to 30, the first stage, zero to 30 traction, right? That's focusing on your tribe of buyers, focusing on building your audience, focusing on getting really good at prospecting conversations, specifically in Messenger, uh, and getting really good at sales, getting really good at coaching what you're coaching on so you can have that high ticket offer and deliver results. Focusing on that. It's not about SOPs. It's not about uh, becoming the leader of a team. Um, it's not about automation. Not about those things. Don't focus on those things from zero to 30, right? You really, really need to focus on marketing, sales, that's where 80% of your time should go and developing your skills as coach, right? And then when you're above 30, 30 to 80K, call that the leverage stage. That's when, whoa, shit, I have so many clients. I can't do it all myself. I need to focus on leverage and getting time back, right? So in the traction stage, when you're at the upper level of the traction stage, you should have an uh, uh, executive assistant. Start getting an exec executive assistant. That's where you kind of chip into leverage and getting things off your plate. Learning how to delegate. That's a big part of the leverage stage, right? Learning how to delegate, having a project management system like Asana or ClickUp or Trello where you can delegate to your team and hiring an accountability coach to help you with delivery, making sure that you can still deliver results at a high level, even though you have all these clients, right? Because we don't want to create programs that are just a quick cash grab for us. And we don't deliver on the promise that we have inside of our programs, right? So leverage, get an accountability coach. Also, you can't handle all those messenger conversations inside the stage. So getting a setter closer, somebody you can develop into a real salesperson, but they learn your messaging, they learn your offers through Messenger, right? And booking sales calls for you. And during that stage, they should transition over that period of time to a closer and still help out with the pipeline, right? So focusing on leverage in that stage, right? 
and then scale above 80K, that's when you start building out the brains of your business. Who's in charge of your marketing department? Who's in charge of your sales department? Who's in charge of your delivery department? Who's your ops manager or COO at this point, right? So really scaling comes from having brains to deliver the strategy for your departments, right? So along each stage, you need to evolve, you need to shift your identity, you need to step up as a, as a human being. And for me, scaling from uh, two and a half uh, million dollars last year uh, to going upwards of $6 million this year, I need to evolve. So I've invested in myself. I've invested uh, somewhere on payment plans, but I've invested, uh, I don't wanna give you a wrong number. Uh, oh, no, no. <laughs> I just added it up, 75, oh, $75,000 just in the past two weeks from joining masterminds, from investing into, uh, investing into an ads coach uh, and all of that so my marketing team can get better. Um, and it's going to take in, like, I have my spiritual coach, my energy coach, Karen Winters, who is phenomenal, who comes in. Shout out. Like, it's a spiritual journey. And Brad and I were just talking about this, that we have the gift of entrepreneurship that is in a, an incredible mirror to where we're not showing up in life and where we need to fix shit. And like, when things go to shit, when shit breaks, it's not that we should run away from it. We should see how we can improve upon it and how we can grow as a human being uh, to serve people. And it's a spiritual journey all along the way. Uh, and uh, like, I've, I've lost that at times on this journey and beat, beat myself up at times. But every time I come back to that, things become so much easier is that things are happening for a reason. And I can't have that, or I, I need to acknowledge that negative self-talk. And uh, there's a good framework uh, called the RAIN framework, uh, which is recognize, allow, investigate, and nurture. And anytime something comes up, all that negative shit, if we can just go through that framework every single time, like, oh, this shit is coming up, this is showing up in my business, and really investigating it and identifying where it's actually coming from and nurturing that part of yourself, that's when we ultimately grow. Um, yeah. So that was my so good. So good, dude. It took you so many breakdowns over the course of three and a half years to figure that shit out. <laughs> like it's easy for people to listen to it you're like wow that's a really good spiel and i'm like nope i've seen every single fucking second of that shit the last three and a half years i've been the like if anyone else has been closer it might be avery ford of understanding of all of us growing through this shit together um and yeah man i just fuck it's the journey dude it's the fucking journey like i i think Every breakdown is preceded by a breakthrough. It's always darkest before the dawn. Exactly. And there's, there's nothing more true than that. Um, and if you, I, I went through uh, uh, Business Mastery by Tony Robbins. It's a little handbook. I didn't get to go. Um, but breakthroughs is, are everything. Um, and everything. we can't have a breakthrough without a breakdown and acknowledging where we're breaking down so we can break through. Right. So it's, a, it's, it's beautiful. Right. Yeah. For example, is anyone, if you're watching, if has anyone ever had the experience of like you cry, like something so terrible and you're crying and then like you, your, your cry, your tears turned into laughter, like literally the, the exact opposite spectrum of like your tears turn into fucking uncontrollable laughter. Like that's a breakthrough. That's a breakdown to a breakthrough. And it's just like, how many times can we do that? And I think, like my experience over the last three years, dude, is like business. I, I know people might not believe this, but like business isn't about money, especially when the business is thriving. Everyone might think it's about generating the 20K or the 30K month or doubling the 30 to 60K. But I, had, I, I heard this really good talk from Simon Sinek about like the purpose of business. And he's like, the purpose of business is not money. It's like, like money is 
gas and your business is like a car that's going somewhere be like in a destination you've never been before but you don't buy like the purpose of the car is not to buy gas which is money like the purpose of the car is to go towards a movement a message bring people along to change people's lives and you stop along the way to fuel it up with gas so you can't go anywhere if you don't have gas but the purpose of the car is not to buy gas it's the message it's the movement it's the transformation and i think being here for the like just working together for so long dude like the money has been solved and i realized like the being in business for money is the biggest fucking lie and illusion that there is about value and transformation and then the money comes it's the values of transformation is the movements the masterminds the message the community it's the people the company and like what we're up to in the world dude that's like why people keep coming back and i think it's i remember back when i was in chicago and i was just trying to make money I think it's okay when you're starting out just yes. trying to make money, right? Um, I think that's okay starting out. But if you let that linger too long, you are going to get burnt out. You're not going to love your life, right? And I, in Chicago, I was like trying, um, uh, trying to build a Shopify store. I was trying to do Amazon FBI, uh, FBA. I was trying to uh, start my agency. And that was just to make money. And that's, that's okay to start. I had the vision. I had the goal at least to pay off my dad's debt, um, to, uh, to ultimately, um, be a better boyfriend and buy my girlfriend shit, uh, that, uh, uh, who I was dating at the time. And that's okay starting out, but you can't let that linger into the second phase. And I'm so grateful that I did burn out and break down in late 2018 because it gave me the opportunity to step back and to think about what I ultimately wanted to create and why I was doing it. Um, and it's okay if you're starting out to go for the money, to go for more freedom in your life, but don't let that linger on because there's gonna come a point where you're just gonna get burnt out by chasing money, chasing money, chasing money, and you need to find a bigger purpose around that. And one thing, I'm sorry, guys, we have not shared yet is transitioning from a group offer to <laughs> a mastermind, which we'll, we'll talk about in a second here. <laughs> and it will give you a fuck ton more money, but that's yeah. not the purpose. Yep. A hundred percent. And let me know how many of you guys drop it down below, hashtag group offer. If you have a group offer, but you don't have a backend offer yet, you don't have a mastermind for clients to ascend into. I just want to get a head count here real quick and let me know. And there's always a delay here. You know, says the purpose is to serve baby a hundred percent. There needs to be darkness in order to see the stars. Love it. I love all these quotes. Oh, damn. That one's good. Keep them coming. hundred percent. So hashtag group offer down below if you have a group offer. There's always a delay here. Let me know. I have a group and mastermind. Jeremy has both. Let me know who you serve, Jeremy. Who's your who's your ideal client? Uh, just uh, Lewis just joined. Don't have it yet. All good, dude. Bruno don't have one yet. All good. So what we recommend is that you serve people in a one-on-one -on -one capacity, and work out your coaching chops and then you can create a, a group offer on the back end of that um, but you need to work on your coaching chops first if you don't have that experience under your belt um, and we talked about that a little bit earlier uh, offer no back end offer liz all right uh, dano says doesn't have it up yet okay i'm sure there are some people on here uh, that uh, are going to transition from uh, a group offer to a back end offer at some point. And I feel like, again, it's just overcomplicated. It's this big thing, but every offer goes through a beta stage. I want everybody to write down beta. You start with beta, right? And in beta, 
you're going to have to have some more one-on-one -on -one elements to serve your clients and to get feedback from them so you can optimize the offer. Like seven figure CEO didn't look like seven figure CEO when I launched it. It was actually called Authority Accelerator Elite, right? And all of our initial, this is important too, all of our initial clients in our back end offer, our first uh, 12 clients came from our core offer first. And we launched it in two parts, right? So the, uh, the first part was, okay, I want to get a handful of my uh, group offer clients in a room and provide a transformation for them. So they're able to say yes to themselves and go to the next level with me. And we did that at a mastermind in, was it 2019? Was it, yeah, April of 2019. April. We had 10 people come in um, to the mastermind three day event. And you can do these virtually now, but in person is way more powerful. Um, but we had 10 people come in and, uh, I knew there was a list of people that if I gave them this offer, they would most likely join and four of them join. Um, I recommend having a, a group event, a mastermind, something like that to uh, provide a transformation and then present your offer there. So you can start out with three, four clients to go through that first beta period with them. And I was concerned that if I only got three, four people in that uh, they would be disappointed. They were over the moon. They got more access, okay. right? Um, and uh, they got more access to me and all of them re-enrolled uh, for the second year when it came that time, right? And then we had a second event and we had eight more people join. Uh, so we were up to 12. Um, and then we launched the big one at Tribe Buyers Live and did a little over a million dollars. But we wouldn't have been able to do that at Tribe Buyers Live if I hadn't gotten people into a group container initially, launched it there at a mastermind. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it was called Authority Accelerator Elite at the time. It wasn't even called Seven Figure CEO. Um, that is better than was, perfect. Yeah. It was just creating that container for people to step into, uh, to shift their identity and to work more. And, and that's what we're doing with our programs, right? We're shifting people's identity so they can step up as a person, right? Um, so that was the first step, was just getting people into a group container, having an offer. Ours was 12 months, you can make it six to 12 months, whatever you wanna do to provide that transformation. Um, but we got that initial group in and it kicked ass, it was awesome. And we learned from each other along the way. Um, and as long as you're stepping up as a leader and growing every day, don't be concerned about uh, your, your, your clients not getting results because they'll have more access to you inside of that new container, right? I remember, man. <laughs> I remember. I remember us being so nervous of like doing it. And then I remember how easy and simple it was. And looking back of like to your group program that you had, the reason it was easy and simple to like extend people the invitation in the back end offer is because we got fucking people awesome results and value inside the group container. So when we presented them something else, they were like, yes, duh, I make return on investment and get results with these people, with Andrew all day long. Why it would be stupid for me not to say yes to this. Yeah. And so, you know, the lot, the impetus is like, yes, like we, we know how to fill up group programs and then we know how to launch the back end offers through masterminds and events. And Danny Tran just did 25 of his core offer into his back end offer all at once, Franco, Emily, we just, they just continue to do this. But the reason, the true reason why it works is because they're getting people results consistently. And then they build the simple strategies and structures, which we teach them to just ascend them into LTV. And yeah, it's phenomenal. And I think a couple of things that you taught me, like when I first like was experienced, like I was such an immature sales rep. I didn't really understand the business concepts around the back end offer and what the like what the value points are. 
but the, you, you actually break it down in one of our seven figure CEO trainings inside the foundations of understanding like the foundations of our offer structure and our model that back end offers are actually more valuable than core program offers. It's the ultimate value that I can provide someone because they get access to me and my team and my method and my roadmap for 12 months, six to 12 months of continuous execution, feedback loop, wins, new levels, new identities. That's why we've been able to have dozens of seven figure CEOs that it doesn't happen in our 90 day core offer. It happens in our 12 month seven figure CEO mastermind because it's a congruent offer for what the promise is. And it's the continuous access to solving problems. And those clients that are willing to commit to a six or 12 month program are the people who are committed. You're creating this container where you have a group of highly committed people. That's the beauty of it. One bad apple can ruin the bunch. But if you have this high ticket program where everybody's committed, then that's where the magic happens. And really where you have high level, high net worth uh, status people inside of your back end offer where they're learning from each other. Like we do breakout rooms inside of Seven Figure CEO where we allow people to connect and network to uh, build strategic partnerships with one another. And Jen says, all in baby, pay in full, no excuses. <laughs> love you, Jen. Jen has absolutely crushed it. I love it. She's building her team, leverage. Snaps for Jen and shout out to Jen Rudolph. Uh, she helps actors uh, have side hustles. You should check her out if you're an actor. Uh, she already hit six figures this month. It's February 2nd. <laughs> like she is, she. Not, not. That? with actors right um, crazy with helping them land more gigs like crazy niche i love it crazy yeah great yeah and um what was i gonna say i forget but take us through recap it done is better than perfect so we're gonna full send it right full send we're so, still alive two things i think are super important um Number one, I want everybody to write this down. Don't dabble. Stop fucking dabbling. I think with launching, ascending from $500 uh, for one-on-one -on -one coaching for six weeks to uh, selling a $6,000 group coaching program to selling a $30,000 uh, uh, MRR offer, I didn't feel ready, but I knew that I was ready. Like I was ready to step up into that new identity. If I put that fire under my ass, I would grow. And we're never going to be ready to launch these offers, right? And we need to do it. And we need to serve our clients at a high level. And that's why we need a little bit more one-on-one -on -one starting out with the beta. What was it? Beta phase, right? Um, <clears throat> day, day one, day one, as we call it. Beta one, day one. And so that's number one. And number two, don't skip steps. I want everybody to write that down. Don't skip steps. Because um, if you try to launch a 10K offer or a, a 25K offer and you, uh, you haven't even sold a handful of 5K offers, you're not ready. Not ready. Don't skip steps, right? And Jeremy says, go all in, choose mastery. Be a pro, not an amateur. And uh, I have a gift for you guys. Um, so if you want to go deeper on creating these group offers and your MRR offer, we have an amazing two-hour training from Avery Ford that will help level you up and really get more clarity on this. So it's a part of our seven-figure CEO vault. If you already have it, don't worry about it. But if you don't have that training yet, hashtag level up and we'll get you over the seven figure CEO vault. If you're ready to level up and really nail down more clarity on your group offers and your back end offers, your masterminds, and we'll get more clarity on that, how to craft them, uh, how to launch them, messaging behind them, hashtag level up, and we'll get you over that, uh, that training, the seven figure CEO vault, which is epic. It has even more trainings. It has uh, Brad's uh, seven, seven figure script. 
uh, and so much more. Hashtag level up and we'll get that over to you guys. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I see some levels level up. Jessica is going all in. She's leveling up. Uh, <laughs> Jeffrey is saying, do it. Do it. Christopher, love it. Bruno, we'll get you that stuff. Chris, love it. Cool. And hit that heart button, hit that like button if you got any value out of this. The more you engage with other people's content, the more your content will show in other people's newsfeed because Facebook likes to see that you're active and engaged. So help us out by helping you out. Uh, hit that heart button, hit that like button if you got anything out of this. Um, and yeah, Brad, dude, we're a little over time here, but right. it's been awesome. Do you have any closing thoughts? I love you. Hard romance. Love you. You're a Newman for sure. Homie. And if anyone who's on this training, like this or our clients, like I, this is my own stuff, how I see business, but business is business is a war of attrition. There is no ending to it. It's a game that has no ending ever. And so we're foraging through this, game a lot of us are foraging going into the forest into this game looking to build the business of our dreams and we enter the forest without a map doesn't make any sense and then people get in the middle of the forest and get lost and then they realize i need a map how to navigate my way through the forest so i just want you to consider what in, like the vault is the map like before you take on a, uh, an adventure with no ending, you have to set your own ending. You should probably have a map. That would be my, to be able to follow the process, no shortcuts, like have a map, have a proven map, have a proven process. Cause my experience is from 12 step recovery when I, before I came into this whole world and they said, Brad, there's fucking 12 steps to spiritual enlightenment and to let go of your addiction and change your life. And I came in, I'm like, I'm going to work step one, step four, step seven, fuck step three. I don't like that. And I didn't get the result. It was finally until I surrendered to the process. I bought into the process. I went committed and recommitted to the process that finally I experienced freedom from active addiction, freedom from um, compulsions. I got my life. I got, I got a career. I got family, I got friends, relationships. And so for your business, follow a map, yeah. surrender. Yeah. And so that would be my invitation for everyone in the group. I love it. Yeah. And the map, the process is the straightest line to your hopes, dreams, desires. It's committing to the process that's already laid out in front of you. Right. But you need somebody to help you along that process because there are going to be breakdowns, right? Yeah. There are going to be breakdowns along this process. If I didn't have the accountability of my own coaches, if I didn't have the accountability of my team, if I didn't have my accountability of my support tribe, I wouldn't be where I was or where I'm at right now. And I remember entrepreneurship was such a lonely journey until I bought into a community of like-minded people where I was like, holy shit, I'm not alone. And there have been different, I, I invested into a 1K program, actually jumped to a 90K mastermind after that. And then I've bought coaching programs ranging from 5K uh, to 75K after that. But it was funny in, the, in, in every mastermind, I realized it's okay to feel the way that I feel. And I remember in the 90K mastermind, there were actually calls with high level entrepreneurs that were far beyond where I was at having massive fucking breakdowns that everything looked good on social media, but we're still going through shit, right? And it, it allowed me to relate to that. And I saw how they picked themselves back up and reframed their situation on one call. And it allowed me to be a better person because I was like, okay, I just need to reframe this shit. And I wouldn't have had that insight if I wasn't around high, other high level uh, individuals where you're not gonna get that from a free community, right? You're not gonna get that from people that are just freebie seekers. There are freebie seekers, there are freebie seekers, and then there are premium seekers. 
And the premium seekers, I'll take them every single fucking time. Because that, you are the average of your five best friends. And if I can be around those people, I will do it every day of the week because that's going to allow me to level up and hopefully I can serve them along the way. So That was really juicy. And the difference between freebie seekers or premium seekers, in my eyes, values. It's not because they have more money. It's not because they have different resources. It's literally a value set and a standard of life, what they hold themselves to and where they want to go. And that's it. It's a choice. And I was, I was there too, where I was so money scarce when I was starting out. But as soon as it like, as soon as I let it go and then I got a result, I was like, there is a, abundance. there is an abundance out there. And it's about surrendering. It's about letting it go and trusting and trusting the process and going all in on, on the process and surrounding yourself with people who actually make you feel good instead of people who you think you should just hang around, have hang around people that actually grow you and make you feel good. And that's ultimately when I saw the abundance, when I started producing the results, committing to a process and surrounding myself with those people. And now the abundance is limitless. And I still go through breakdowns from time to time. Not everything is always peachy, but it's an upper limit. And one book that you recommend to all of our clients is, uh, is The Big Leap, which talks all about the upper limit problem, where if you're growing, you're always going to hit an upper limit. And uh, Eli, what Eli always says, Eli Wild, um, he always says, well, if, uh, if a uh, plant isn't growing, what is it, what is it doing? If a plant dying. is it's dying, right? And uh, we're, we're going to continue to grow and we're always going to hit those upper limit problems. It's about shifting our identity, which will allow us to embody a new person that will find the how because we've embodied that new identity, right? My identity when I go to the gym now is I'm an athlete. I train like an athlete and I can source that person within myself when I'm telling myself I'm an athlete, I train like an athlete because that's going to get my body to a place where I look like an athlete, right? And just shifting that identity. That's why we call seven-figure CEO, seven-figure CEO. is because we want our clients to embody that identity, to think like a seven-figure CEO, not like a hustling six-figure coach, right? I could stay here forever. So I got one more last thing. This is, this is, I love doing this with you so much. Like the identity shift, what I see, because I deal with uh, everyone from literally zero and like there maybe like you've been in business, but you're shifting a new offer and you're shifting into the business and like you have to validate a new offer, new product market fit, you're trying to figure stuff out all the way up to like literally 400K month type entrepreneurs. And so I'm always investigating and observing what's the difference? What's the difference? What's the difference? It literally is the questions that they ask themselves and the meanings that they give their situation. It's the only difference. Six-figure entrepreneurs and that stay there are just constantly asking how. That's what, how. How do I do it? What's how, like how and what? Seven and eight-figure entrepreneurs are constantly asking why and who. Literally, that's the difference. And so, if like, how do I do it? How do I do it? How do I do it? I already know. Like, I know the new que- the next. I know the questions for you. It's like, why are you doing this? Why did this happen? Who do you need to be? Who do you need to ask is the, is the next level. So it's the questions that we ask ourselves to step into that new identity. Quality of questions equal the quality of our communication, which is the quality of our life. It's, it's simple. I, uh, I love it. I think we'll end it on that. I want to give a massive cool. shout out for Jeremy being active and engaged with us the whole time. I love What's your- What's up, Jeremy? And- love, love your face hole, Jeremy. Great. Love the holes. My best face hole I've ever seen. I don't know if that's nice or rude, whatever. Uh, Justin, thank you for being active and engaged. Jen, I see you. You're amazing. I love what you do. I love how you serve. Justin, you rock. 
You keep being you, boo boo. <laughs> I am going delirious right now. And uh, Matt, Matt is going to give me an arm sleeve. He is the most incredible tattoo artist on the face of the earth and Back also helps other tattoo artists build their businesses, get more sales, get more people into their shops. Massive shout out to Matt. Massive. Uh, want a tattoo and you're in the Ohio area, or if you're growing a tattoo shop, reach out to Matt. And uh, Dano, good to see you. Love your face. We'll end it on that. Brad, thank you so thank much. You. Jeffrey, I love you. And uh, we'll, we'll do these more often. This was fun. Cool. Peace. Bye, everyone.